I believe God has called you to be like a Billy Graham for this hour. You're a Jewish rabbi, but you're the new Billy Graham. That's a sign of the last days that God would pick a Jewish rabbi to speak to our nation. That's right. And, and in the last few months, you've spoken in Washington, D.C. You spoke at the UN. You spoke at the White Fe- House. No, I mean, the Federal uh, Hall. Federal oh, Hall. I wish you'd be with the White House. <laughs> the Federal Hall. Yeah. And... Uh, I think that's a sign to me. I mean, it's never happened like that. It's happened where I've done one or another, but now all these things are happening. I believe the Lord's bringing it a full circle because I believe that the, the hour we're at is critical. Yes. I believe the, the Lord wants the warning to go forth. Yes. So I'm thrilled to have you back. And Thank we, you, we get on the air and you just fly in. We meet in the green room. All, and all, and we just, it's, it's just we live crazy lives. Yes, we do. You're going of the Lord. out there, yeah. and we're here, and, and we never stop. No, but we we, we get to meet there like <laughs> ships in the night, they say. And uh, we never even get to say, how's the family? Yes, that's Aww. one of the latest of Eliel. That's Eliel there. Eliel, he's, uh, he's growing, so isn't he? Yeah, he's growing. When I first came here, he was like, I don't he know, a year like or a little. Yeah. He was like this. Um, yeah, uh, well, first of all, Renata, who had, who's had Lyme disease, yeah. is finally being healed. <gasps> so thank yeah. you for your prayers. Yeah. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and she's not, there's still a battle, but right. she is beginning to get healed, so it's wonderful. Um, secondly, the kids are doing great. Um, when I, uh, uh, you know, Eliel said to me, he, you know, he said, you know, Daddy, you're always traveling, you're always traveling. You know, I said, well, you know, I have to do the Lord's work. And also, you know, this helps give you, you food and toys. And he said, toys, yes, travel, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Eliel is, how, he's five, Eliel is now. five now. And, and, uh, and just before I left, when I left yesterday to come here, they, Eliel and Diel hid my luggage from me oh. so I could not come. Now, that sounds like a Diel move right there. Well, well, I, well I said, I, I asked Diel, the three-year-old, I said, <laughs> where, where are they? He said, in my brother's bedroom. Ah! So, he, so they're not very good at that. <laughs> yeah. But then the other thing, with, with, um, that's Diel holding a Bible and wearing my tie, holding my Bible and, sh- and walking in my shoes. He's getting ready to oh, preach there oh, by his crib. <laughs> I love that little boy. Oh, my goodness. So the... Uh, when I was actually praying for Renata for healing, we were actually anointing her with oil, and Eliel yes. said, what are you doing? I said, well, Eliel, remember I, we read about uh, Samuel anointing David? He said, oh, okay. And then he said, then he looked a little puzzled. He said, Dad, I said, yeah. I said, is she going to become king? <laughs> I said, not on my watch. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So it's great. It's hard to be away, you know, but they're, they're doing great. They're doing they well. They are, yeah. and Renata yeah. is an amazing <clears throat> mother, and um, it was just such a privilege for us Oh. To go with you, Rabbi, oh, and, my and, and with Renata and the boys. That was the best part uh, of the trip, is being with your family. With that was wonderful. Rabbi Jonathan Con- that trip, we, the, we're just finishing the final video of the trip. Yes. I mean, it's, I could say, miles of video. It really is. Hours and hours and hours. And it's beautiful video. And the editors are just finishing and it's not even half of the trip has not even been seen on television. No. And we're going to do something crazy today in honor. This this is your 13th visit. Am I right? Yes. Wow. Yes. To wow. our ministry. Yes. And Incredible. this is your 10th anniversary of we marriage. Ju- just last week is our 10th anniversary of marriage. 10th anniversary. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Just, so we got to honor one or the <laughs> other. So what we're doing, we have the, the video. Give me the Holy Land videos. Damn. This is tremendous. It's not just the trip. It's, it's teaching of the rabbi all over the place. That's right. Every single it's, place we stopped, the rabbi would just take those few minutes and, and teach us about exactly where we were. And it was also so precious, too, because you had your guitar. Ricky was your little armor bearer carrying your guitar. Yes, and, and you had your guitar, and you would, we would just sing praise and worship songs to the Lord. Just so you sing as well. <laughs> and so simple, and, but so pure. And then you would go into a teaching of every single place that we stopped. It was mind-blowing. I... Like we said, Sasha and I, we're probably the only two who have time, you know, together sometimes to 
process it and talk about it. And there's even moments that now we look back and we're like, wow, I forgot that happened just because when you're living in that moment, you keep going. But looking back on it, it's such a significant value because you look back and you realize what God was doing in that moment and how big it was. Galilee, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's the peace of God. And Jerusalem is just, you're the center of the world. And yet, strangely, another thing that I kind of like them you wouldn't think is the wilderness and oh, it's I mean like there's too. something you're just like alone with god you know in hebrew the word wilderness is midbar i had never but, heard be anybody do that but you to yeah. go in the wilderness to go in the yeah. wilderness yeah, yeah. Like I, and a bedouin tent in a bedouin yeah. tent oh, it was oh, one of the one of everybody, everybody was afraid of it before everybody said oh what's going to go on everybody was afraid of it and when, right. when they did it they said that was that we just loved it it was most wonderful thing in, in and the, that's that's in volume yeah. two by the way you that already ordered your set, your videos, you get bonus. I'm not bonus. You just get <coughs> the second half of the trip. Where we're in the wilderness. Which we, the wilderness. we're just finishing and this week. They're and, just finishing and, the editing. And Jerusalem, yeah. The Coming thing about up. the wilderness, you're going to want to know this. We're not going to talk about today. <laughs> no, we got to go on. Let me just tell you this. You're going to get, you're gonna have to get the DVDs for this. The thing about the wilderness was after Rabbi with how many we had, um, I don't know, it was like eight buses of people, so it took a lot of Jeeps. This was hardcore, rugged terrain to get to this wilderness, which was so barren. There was, it wasn't like where I'm from, Phoenix, where there's at least a, a, a few trees. It, it, there was no trees and um it was the true wilderness and when rabbi when you taught on the wilderness the wildernesses of our life we had that was our sunday morning service sunday and morning and because service. that's part of life one of the most yeah. important things and well, we think it's a bad thing but i was saying in hebrew the word is midbar midbar comes from dabar which means to speak god especially speaks in the wilderness yes, in our wildernesses yes, he, he speaks we know him that's where he gave the torah that's where he gave the tabernacle that's where the bible began so we can't we, we can't despise it it's it's a beautiful thing we draw closer to god in the wilderness yes. that's why every part of the land is like a journey has to do with our lives yes. every one of them every yes. part so and, and so yeah. to celebrate <coughs> your 13th <laughs> visit your 10 year anniversary we're doing something very very crazy now remember if you've already ordered you get in about a week or two you're going to get your the second, second oh, half yeah. free just Volume don't two. you don't send money or, mm. or anything you, you just get it there the 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 work of editing is just being finished up on this this is a huge trip and so it but today to celebrate <laughs> your 10th anniversary with 13. your marriage okay. and your 13th, anniversary wedding. Uh, visit, 13th, and 13th visit to the show yeah. But, you, but this volume two has the Bedouin tents, the des- desert worship, but it has Jim and Laurie in Jerusalem. Um, that, mm, that is mm. wonderful. The uh, Temple Mount, yeah, Yavasham, which is the, uh, the Holocaust, Holocaust, the Museum. Holocaust Museum. Underground tours of the, David's, of David, the city right? Oh, David. yeah, the city of David, oh, which yeah. nobody, that was a nobody special. Nobody gets to go there. <laughs> yeah. That we went into the where. And we went into this chamber where they believe. We had to climb believed, ladders to yeah, get down. We had to go, and where they believe the ark was. Yes. And then nobody goes there. So that, no, they, I believe they filmed it. Yeah. And then the upper room, the eastern gate, where oh. the oh. Arabs said, you can't sing here. Cause <laughs> where we were singing. That? And they said, you know, you're disturbing the dead. I said, well, that would be great if we could disturb the yeah. dead. But, wow. but, but that's the gate where Messiah is going to enter in. And so it's so prophetic right across from the Mount of Olives. For today, just this time, for $55, we're giving you both of the whole tour. Oh, my goodness. So you that already have them could give this as a friend. If you want to give somebody a complete tour of the Holy Land, with the rabbi. That's right. Uh, amazing video that no one has ever seen right. before. Brand new video. It's a total of 20 hours in Israel. And each wow. day, it's not just, you know, you're it's seeing insane. these places. <laughs> right. You're hearing every single teaching yes. that Rabbi Jonathan Khan taught us in Israel as well. Yes. We even, we even had the opportunity, <clears throat> an incredible opportunity, to go to an army base, an Israeli army base. This, this is worth having. And I, I always tell people, when the grid goes down and you have your generator, be sure to have your, your nice DVD player because you're going to be able to watch all this stuff. You won't have television. You're going to suddenly begin to watch all those videos you've never looked at. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yes. You know what I mean? All right, oh, then, yes. then here's the other thing. We want to do a really 13th visit deal. And for a gift of $100, 
I want to give you the complete package, and I want wow. you to give this stuff away if you have right. it. All of the harbinger, right the harbinger, the ancient mystery that holds the secret. This is what started it all. Introduced on our show, thank God. Then the mystery of the Shemitah, which is powerful. These two are the most important books. If your friends or family haven't read them, get them for them. But here's what we're going to do. For a gift of $100, you're getting these two foundational books. Then the mystery of the Shemitah Unlocked. This is That's the really DVD. a great yes. video, DVD. Then, I hope you don't mind, but no. we're, we're, we're no, throwing... Wonderful. Hubie Sins. Wonderful. The Prophet, The Wandering Prophets, brand new book, just introduced on our show. We're throwing, throwing that in today. So that's $100 uh, for a $100 gift. That's right. And then we're also adding The Mysteries, Volume 13, oh, which wow. is a nine DVD set oh. in this as well. And this is all for a donation of only $100 to the ministry. That's shocking. Look at all, look at all of these. The Dark Angel Sacrifice. The, oh, oh goodness, I can't pronounce I can, I, I, can, it I can say it. <laughs> the Grass of Adon Mysteries is the mystery of Messiah's cloak that can transform our life. Yes. Uh, the Twilight of the Gods. Um, the Ghost Kingdom I'm going to share coming up. It's totally end time prophecy in a whole new way. Uh, the Days of the Watchmen. Uh, the Word for the Hour, which is not even spoken yet. It, no one's heard it. It's gonna be, it'll be available there, but this is the Word for Now. The Isaiah 910 metamorphosis. There's things that, and also all the speeches that I that I did, the uh, the addresses, the United Nations, the the Capitol Hill address. These are prophetic, and Federal Hall, which nobody has seen, only one person recorded it, will be wow. all on another disc. They're they adding they're adding it as a special thing. So those all the prophetic addresses will be there as well. I, so, I mean yeah. that is worth a hundred dollars. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, just that alone. Much. And for today only, to kick off your anniversary. <laughs> I'm throwing in the tour of the Holy Land, the wow. two sets of video, 20 hours. If you went to buy this, this what would this sell if you... If you 20 hours of, of DVDs would be, a, would be a lot. Hundreds would, of would yeah, be exactly. a lot. would be a lot. I, mean, I don't even have it. That's how no, much... I, no, <laughs> I'd like to have it. it. I'd like to have but it. I just, <laughs> just <laughs> asked for the rabbi's <laughs> anniversary special, and that's um, for today's amazing. show only. Uh, let's just do it. I mean, we, I don't think we make anything off from it, but I we're going to bless a lot of people because this is good stuff. For those who have all these things, the brand new videos, but if you want to get the brand new mysteries. Of yes, volume 13, which is nine DVDs of teaching within that. Wow. That's mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's worth, for a gift of $55 by itself. So get that. That's worth $500 right. right there. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you have, we're celebrating your anniversary. <laughs> And where did you take your wife? Uh, we, well, this, this, was, this, this was her dream. This was her dream of 10 years uh, to go to the Mediterranean and oh. a little cruise. I've never done it in my life. You know. Um, I and can't imagine you stopping that long. It Preaching. was well, I, I brought my laptop with me, but, ah, not, yes. I, but I, only, <laughs> only when she was asleep. Um, but uh, then we went to Rome for the first time. Well, I've never been to Rome. No. Ne never been to Rome. Um, went to Rome and we had a day and a half, but we saw so many things. And there, I mean, again, this was just, I came back on Friday. You know, I just, just came back. Um, but I want, but just, I'll share something that I saw in Rome. Have you been, have you I've been, been you've been, Rome. okay. I, guess. I was yeah. there for like two days too, right, Lynn? We were there. Yeah. With the girls. Well, we went to the classical city, and this is the city of Seven Hills by Revelation, yeah. Seven Hills. And you literally can see the hills. And we saw the, the two objects that I want to mention. One is the most cl classically Roman thing, which is the Colosseum. And the Colosseum is this massive, massive stadium, 2,000 years old. You know, amazing how they did it. You could have 50 to 80,000 Romans there. And that's where, you know, you go there and you see they, they, it's called the arena because they put sand on there. And in, in Latin, sand is arena. That's how you get the word arena. So because they had sand, which would also, you know, clean up the blood. They would have, they would have pagan things there. They would, have, they would have the gladiator fights and people to the death. They would have the animals. Some, we don't know how many Christians were killed there. You know, we know there were some, and there were some who were killed right outside. There was a big statue of Nero. That's why it was called the Colosseum, uh, Colossus. So this is a real, pay, I mean, this is, this is paganism. So you can imagine 50 to 80,000 Romans shouting and want, for entertainment to see blood. This is one of the most pagan things ever. But there's a kind of mystery behind it. And I'll, I'll, something that has to do with us. And that is this. First of all, 
who built it? The one who built it was the Emperor Vespasian. And it was finished by his son, Titus. Now, if you know biblical history, it's very important because Vespasian is the same general who marched into Israel to destroy Israel in, in around the late, when they had the rebellion, 60, 60 to 70 AD. So he's the one who came in there. When, while he was there, Nero committed suicide, and so he ran back to Rome to become emperor. So then he, the general became emperor. He left his son Titus in charge of the army. So Titus came in, and Titus is the general who destroyed Israel, destroyed the temple, destro sent them into captivity. All the things that Jesus, Messiah, prophesied, Titus did. As, I mean, they just, they just wiped out everything, raised the temple. So Titus and Vespasian, who destroyed Israel, are the ones who built the Colosseum. Wow. Now, now, the thing about it is the Colosseum was begun in the year 72 AD. Now, interesting, because that's two years after the temple of God was destroyed. But there's a, there's a real connection here, because here, here's the connection. The Colosseum, this most pagan thing, the Roman, you know, classic Rome, was built out of the treasures of the temple of God. People don't realize it. The I temple never, oh. of Jerusalem built the Colosseum. Out of the treasures that they took from God's temple, they built this pagan Colosseum. They didn't and, tell us. The no, tour guide didn't tell no, us they, that when we were on it, our tour. That's why it exists. And the first thing, I'm going to just talk about two objects I saw there. First, the Colosseum. The first thing that tells us about the enemy, because we're talking about this, you know, you're, you're, which is great. You're fired up in fighting because we're, I'm going to talk about that today because we're in, in these days. We have to be. The first thing is that the enemy, it tells us, is a defiler. He doesn't just do evil. He seeks to take what's good and turn it for evil. He, takes, yeah. he wants to take what's used for God and use it for his purposes. So it's not just that he does bad. He takes what is good. He takes the temple of God, destroys it, and uses it for his purposes. So we, from the last days, we've got to remember, the spirit of the enemy is the spirit of defilement and desecration. That's why we see this around. That's why we see the desecration of marriage, desecration of gender, desecration of all these things. That's the spirit of the enemy in the last days. Listen, the abomination desolation, that is the defilement the, of God's temple. The so, cross is because they're taking crosses down. All of that is yeah, why, why we're... To defile, we're to mock, right to now. blaspheme. Have you seen A.D., the movie? I ha the AD, the, uh, the television Mark, thing? I haven't. You probably... I, I saw the first one, one of them. All that time. Yeah. But uh, we've recorded it, so we've, we've watched them all. But it's the violence. Yes. That the, the hatred for, for, with Rome and all for God and for Jesus. And one of the mysteries is that what was in the beginning is coming back at the end. Oh, my God. So, therefore, that's if, what, I was that's what, that's what we are watching. We are watching the beginning of persecution. We're watching that, this spirit of hatred. And it's, a, and it's a spirit of, 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 again, the enemy is a desecrator. When God spoke of the enemy in the prophets, he said, you defiled my sanctuary. You defiled it. So that's what he does. So it's not just the abomination and desolation that's coming, and not just when he did it back then, he's doing it, but also that he wants to defile everything that's of God. He wants to wow. desecrate everything that's of God. And so he, does, he desecrates marriage, desecrates manhood, womanhood, all these things, and wants to defile God's name. And so the thing is that we got to remember the Bible says, do you not know you are the temple of God? Yes. We yes. are the temple of yes. God now. Yes. And so therefore he's always going, we have to, he's always going to try to defile us, distract us, take us away from the purpose of God. Yeah. And so we have to guard our walk so much more in the last days. Guard your sanctity, guard your purity, guard your focus, guard that because you are God's purpose. You have God's purposes in you. You've got the presence of God in you. You're, you were, each of us were born to house the presence of God, but it, when we're born again, we become that temple. And the other thing, about it another key in this is that here put this together if, if, if the Colosseum was built out of the temple of God then therefore either the temple stands or the Colosseum stands you got one or the other yeah so the thing is the way to fight impurity if you're living in impurity Colosseum lust uh, conflict uh, flesh you're not gonna have the temple the presence of God shine in your life but on the other hand the greatest offense against the enemy the greatest offense against temptation is the temple. When the temple is standing, you have no Colosseum. So when you have prayer, when you have the, fil the fullness of God's presence, you will resist temptation. You will overcome that fight. You will overcome the anxiety. You will all those things. It, it, the answer to sin is not just trying not to sin. That's good, but that's not the power. The answer to sin is the presence of God. The yeah. more we get into the presence of God in our life, the, the temple, the more we will overcome the world. Amen. That is the key right there. That's great.
You know, as I watch this movie, God spoke to me exactly what you're saying. Every time you come, you bring word that God has been dealing with me and preparing my heart for. And Gloria, you know I've told you this. We're watching A.D. the Bible. The Bible series. We watched it every Sunday and, night. And I'm yes. telling you, while we're watching it, this same crowd's alive right now. Yes. This same crowd is, isn't in America. Right. This same crowd is trying to destroy America. We're we're doing, you know, murdering our babies. We're doing all the things that kill the church, destroy the church. The church has become the enemy of America. That's right. You don't believe it? Well, you're living under a rock somewhere. <laughs> but this is what God's trying to show yes, us. Yes. God brought you there yeah. to warn us the same spirit of Antichrist that killed Jesus, that wanted him put away is alive and well right yeah, now on yeah, planet Earth. Yes, one, yeah, with, well, and I agree with you. Everything. One of, the, one of the mysteries is that not only Rome comes back, we know that, but if Rome comes back, so does persecution. And, and, so, and in the same way, but it also means if you look back to the first century, that is also the time of the greatest explosion of the spirit and the power of God. Yeah. So what it means is, you know, the last days are not just dark times. The last days are times of polarization. Yes. The dark gets darker, but the lights are to get brighter. Now the lights, the, the, the grays disappear. Yeah. What we're watching, the grays disappear. When they yeah. take the polls, they find they're actually less Christians in America now because they're less nominal Christians. Right. What happens is the grays, they weren't real to be, but the grays disappear. What's left are the real believers. Yeah. But the real believers then shine. So the, the, the grays are disappearing. The black, the dark is getting darker. The lights are getting, have to get lighter. Yeah. So yes, at the same moment, it says the love of many will grow cold, evil will, but it says my, I will pour my spirit and the gospel shall be preached to all nations. So it is a double-edged sword. But it is, so in the same way if Rome is revived then the book of Acts has to revive yeah. then we have to be as they were God is calling us to be that yeah. and so one of the things about persecution it forces us to go one way or the other yeah. it, it forces us to either go terribly or become the great per the great but a disciple yeah. we were meant to be. Yeah. God wants the book of Acts again. That's why Jewish believers are back, because they were back, they were then. That's why, that's why Israel's back, because it was back then in the book yeah. of Acts. That's why the, the outpouring of the Spirit has, has been back. All these things, it's not, you know, you could the bad side, but look at the good side. If Rome is back, we have to be, if it's the, that civilization is coming back, we have to become the same believers as we're back in the time of Rome. Yeah. That's the point. That's what. And, but, yeah. but, but that was... Yeah. That was, that was one object I saw. But then oh. there was one other object, which, which is right next to the Colosseum. And I've talked about this object, but I never saw it. I didn't even know it was right there. It's on a little hill. You, you see the Colosseum, you go up a hill, and there you see this arch. And this arch is an arch from which all these other arches came. You have the Arch of uh, de, de Triomphe, the Napoleon. All these things were based on this arch, Roman arch. What is the arch? It's the Arch of Titus. The Arch of Titus, same guy, same one who built the Colosseum, same one who destroyed the temple. It is now he has an arch named after him. And that arch was built to celebrate uh, not only Titus, but the destruction of Israel, the destruction of the temple. That Israel is dead, the Jewish people are no more a nation, they are scattered, will never be a nation again. You have the Arch of Titus standing in Rome. So, so that, and, and on the Arch of Titus, you see a, a relief, a graphic relief, of the Romans carrying away the treasures of the temple. And so in their hands, they have the silver trumpets on that arch. In their hands, they have the table of the showbread, of the bread of the presence. And in their hands, they have the menorah of God. That's all there celebrating. It, you, you take it like it's the enemy behind it saying, yes, you know, Israel's finished, will never be again. It's the enemy behind that. So that arch has stood for 2,000 years. In fact, rabbis have said to Jewish people, don't ever go through that arch you know, until Israel came back because you're, you cannot be part of what this is. So this is declaring Israel's dead. But God had other plans. God's word said Israel will come alive again. The yeah. word of God. Yeah, you have this yeah. massive arch, and then you have, this, you have this word of God scroll, but God's word was in that scroll, and it said that nation will come alive again. And, then, and so therefore, after 2,000 years, Israel came back into the world according to God. But you have that arch of Titus. Now, one of the things, when that arch of Titus was there, when Israel came back, someone wrote, you can't see it now, someone wrote graffiti on the top of that arch. And it, it was Hebrew graffiti. And it said, it said in Hebrew, Am Yisrael Chai, the nation of Israel is alive again, yeah. lives, lives again. And, yes. and so, the, the, so, the, so the thing is that 
the enemy wanted Israel dead, destroyed, never come back, because he knows that they come back, he's in trouble, because this, this is the prophecy of God. So therefore, here's the thing, but here's what the Arch of Titus tells us. When Israel came back, they had to come up with a symbol for, to represent the newborn, resurrected Israel. Now, if you ask, what's the symbol? You think, well, it's the Star of David, it's the flag. No, that's the flag. But the symbol of Israel, the official symbol of Israel, is the seven-branch menorah of God in that burned in the holy place of the temple, burned in the night. That seven branch that's in Exodus was there. But the problem is there was no, there was no way anybody could know exactly how it looked like, you know, what it looked like, because they really had no real depiction of it at the time. So, but except one, the Arch of Titus. The Arch of Titus that was built to celebrate the destruction of Israel inadvertently preserved the holy vessels because they put it in stone. So here the enemy meant to destroy it, but by doing that, he ended up preserving. We can see exactly how that menorah looked. So when Israel had to come up with its official symbol of resurrection, they went to the Arch of Titus. Oh and they, they saw, they, they, they took that. When you look at the official seal of Israel, it's from the Arch of Titus. Oh. So what does that tell you? What does that tell us? Well, here's the thing. You know, we say that what, what, what the enemy does, he tries to take what God uses, uses for his word. What God, here's the bigger, better thing. God takes all that the enemy does and turns it around for his glory and his purposes. Yes. Everything. Yes. yes. Everything that the enemy tries to do, this is that the Arch of Titus is telling you, God will turn it around if you keep going. And you know, so Joseph said to his brothers, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. Every single thing. You know, I know, you, I, you remember Richard Wormbrand, who, who, was, who was the leader of the underground church. And I've interviewed him. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I loved him. I knew him at the end of his life. Love, a Jewish believer from Romania, underground church, was in prison for years under, and was tortured. And yet, that, that he, if you asked him, would he, would he not he'd say I would do it again because that the worst times became the greatest times it made me who I am and the thing is that the promise of God whatever we're going the promise of God even if we're part of the mess up even if we messed up or the enemy just destroyed things the, the promise of God is we keep going we love God we keep going he will turn every single thing that the enemy meant for evil against us for our blessing our redemption our restoration every single problem will be turned as to be a servant of God will bow its knee before God and yeah. will be used for the the glory of God so that you know Amen. if you take that remember the arch of Titus that even even when, no matter what the enemy does it's going to come against him in the end we have to keep standing don't panic when the enemy's going crazy okay. don't go crazy when the enemy's going crazy right. because God promises it will be for your blessing and I'm trying to warn people that the Jews returning in 1948 becoming a state is the foundation prophecy for where we live right now we are the final generation as far as I'm concerned all the dates all the times it's there God's word is so simple so true and so we're in and and before you leave this week you got to bring us up on the Shemitah, up, 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 on, up, up on all of the, the Shemitah, the harbingers, yes. everything, because yes. this year yes. is bringing to conclusion yes. and the blood moons and all the holy days and Jubilee and all of its coming. I want you to tell us straight out this week where you see we're headed as a nation. I mean, Greece is collapsing. They're taking their monies out of the banks. They're so afraid the euro's going to go. And when you read, the bond market is bracing for the worst collapse in history, according to the news today. Is that what it mm. says? That's exactly right. Yeah, right now, as we speak, they're loading up on cash, preparing for the bond market to crash. So here we are. Mm. Everything you've tried mm. to warn us mm. is taking place. But I wanted you to close this hour mm -hmm. with what's going to happen in America a little bit, because we're going to talk about it all yeah, week. Yeah, we're going to do that, and, and, and we'll talk all about preparing because we're getting close. We'll do it with all the time but, we have. We'll do okay. it, yeah. America yeah. feels like, I think, that we were special. We've all been told that since we were said we're the number one country. We're the greatest na nation in the world. And we haven't, we're not that anymore. We are the number one debtor in the world. We used to be the number one Credit, loaner. Yes. And that's biblical, yeah. isn't it? Deuteronomy 28. You know, if you, if you follow me, you will lend to many nations. You will not borrow. But the inverse is, if you don't, you'll go from that. So we went in this period, and this, is, this, is, this happened during the period of America's fall. This happened, if you take 1960s 
uh, putting God out and then exactly. to where we are now, yeah. we went from the greatest creditor nation to the greatest debtor nation. We will be right back after this special message. We're in a time where God has warned. I believe the blood moons, the, the appearing on holy days, everything converging at yes. the same time. Yeah. I believe a great shaking is coming, great shaking that will change things, affecting America financially, economically, and more than that, and will affect the world. I believe it's unwise not to be ready. My Jewish friends have an expression. They'd rather be a year too soon than 10 minutes too late. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> sir. Our big survival food offers are back. We have teamed with leaders in the survival food industry to bring you a new variety of food while still holding down the cost for you. And so we have now this brand new food for a year for you yeah. and a year for, for two. two. And the time and then, of travel, which is seven years. And so it's food. all ready to mm -hmm. go now. Each of the foods we now offer have been taste tested to make sure you get the best tasting quality food that you expect from this ministry. In each of these offers, you will receive buttermilk pancakes, maple brown sugar oatmeal, chocolate pudding, morning mousse whey milk, creamy chicken and rice, hearty vegetable chicken, chicken noodle soup, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, italiano marinara, black bean burger, creamy potato soup, corn chowder, macaroni and cheese, banana chips, instant white rice, and instant mashed potatoes. Don't wait until it's too late. That's yes. right. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes. Be prepared. You can receive the tasty new foods year for you offer for a donation of $600 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 1,096 servings of food. The retail value of this offer is $1,150 and is at a cost of just 55 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods year for two offer for a donation of $1,100 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 2,192 servings of food in eight buckets. This offer has a retail value of $2,300 and is at a cost of just 50 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods time of trouble offer for a donation of $3,500 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 7,672 servings of food in 28 buckets. This offer has a retail value of $8,055 and is at a cost of just 46 cents per serving. We can only guarantee the prices for a limited amount of time, so get this new food now. Call 1-888-988-1588 or go online to jimbakershow.com. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support. The helps keep us broadcasting around the world. And the Shemitah is linked to debt. You know, the stronger the debt, generally if you look at the pattern, the stronger the, the power of the Shemitah or the effect of the Shemitah comes. So we are now at a house of cards. So it's answering while our moral state is going, you know, going, uh, descending, our, even our finances are not in order. Everything's a house of cards. We're at a tipping point. And I believe we're, I mean, we're past one of the tipping points, but we're, we are at a, you know, we were here, we were here when there was the election, the second election of the inauguration. Uh, and we saw that it was the first time the majority of Americans said, redefine marriage and the biblical definition. Well, we are watching since when you reach a tipping point, when you get to that point, things accelerate. You push over a chair. When you get to that tipping oh. point, it accelerates. So what we're watching in the last two years has been things accelerating greatly. I mean, it's barely a day goes by when you don't hear another anti a story about a persecuting of Christians, attacking Christians, celebrating immorality. It's happening faster and faster and faster and faster. So we are beyond the tipping now. We're at that I, I tipping point. I believe we've been, well, on one hand, I believe we're, on, we're beyond the tipping point of morally, but we are, I believe, at a tipping point of judgment. Wow. Did you ever lean back in your chair? Ever seen anybody mm. lean back in the chair? And then it just goes back and nice. back, and all of a sudden, Tip over. bam, yeah. you're going down. And that's where you say we are in America? Yeah, I, 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 believe, I believe, you know, God, listen, we know this, God warns before he judges. I believe, you know, when 9-11 happened, 
Some, we, it looked like there was going to be a, a revival, a national revival, but there was no revival because there was no repentance. There was no connecting. There was no change, of course. I believe one of the reasons why the Lord wanted me to write the Harbinger in the Shemitah was to, to connect it now before the next thing happens so that when it happens, it will be connected. And so because I, because I believe this is coming, this is, you know, one of the words for Shemitah in Hebrew, one of the meanings can mean the fall. So not just physical falls, collapse, we've seen it, Wall Street, all that, but also the fall, we even see a moral fall, a spiritual fall. One of the key Shemitahs was 1973. During that year, not only do you have, the, you have, you have Vietnam, loss of that, you have, you have many things fall apart, but you also have the legalization of the killing of unborn children. That was a major, if you had to look at the major thing, major point of a fall. That's 1973. Well, here we are in 2015, and very shortly the Supreme Court is going to rule on marriage as we know it, as we know it. That will, if they rule that way, this will be a threshold. This will be a major thing. This has been building for years and years and years. But when this happens, this is a major threshold that we're crossing. And, you know, I, I was, when I spoke in Congress, you know, a few, you know, it was the day after the Supreme Court heard the case. So I had to come to Washington. I came to Washington just as they were hearing that case, the day before. I came there, and I saw on the, on the steps of the Supreme Court were people in sackcloth and ashes. You know, and, and with just, just standing like witnesses of God, just witnesses of God that if we cross this threshold. The, and so at the same time, that's when the Lord gave me the op opportunity to give the warning at, uh, you know, on Capitol Hill. And actually the next day, and this is not, you know, the next day, I always talk about Federal Hall Washington, you know, and the harbinger that got that, that Washington gave this warning to America yeah. on the first day, which was, the warning was, it was the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. In other words, if America ever turns away from God, disregards his eternal rules of order, turns away, the blessings of God will be removed from the land. It was on the anniversary of that that I was in Congress. It was just about that same time that the Supreme Court heard that, that case. And the next day, on the actual anniversary, April, when Washington gave it, suddenly the federal hall where Washington gave it in New York City opened up for me to speak there in that oh. place where Washington gave it and give the warning again in that place. I believe that we are... Boy, that's a harbinger. It, it is. I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know how these things have all come together, but I believe things are all coming together now. And the warning, if anything... Answers to that warning that Washington gave, it is certainly this, this, this where, where America's heading. This, if the Supreme Court rules, talk about disregarding the eternal rules of order. When you strike that down, the smiles of heaven will be removed. So I believe we are at a very, very critical point. And one of the things the prophets cry out, to America, to Israel, that it says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And there's a principle that as much as a civilization calls evil good, it will call good evil. So we are watching at the sa every time America embraces something against the bug of immorality, at the same time you hear stories about America calling Christians evil, intolerant, haters, right. for what? For simply upholding what everybody upheld before, and now who not joining in the apostasy. And so they are now persecuted. They are driven from their jobs. They are boycotted. Yeah. They, are, they are condemned. This is exactly what happened to Israel when it turned away from God. When they called evil good, they called good evil. So that's why we see the beginning of persecution. One of the ominous things that happened on the day that the Supreme Court heard that case is, I don't know if you, you know, the, the Supreme Court Justice Alito speaks to the White House attorney, and he says, okay, if this, if, if the definition of marriage is struck down, what will happen, what will the government do with all the religious schools that uphold marriage as such? And now you think that, you know, the, the politically correct thing to do, I mean, they've been briefed on it, they, the White House has gone over with the attorney if they ask this, this, so they know exactly what they're saying, and they had to be ready for that question. So you think they said, well, we don't know, we, who can say, you know, or we're not, we're, nothing's really going to happen, we what he answers is, instead of saying no, he said, well, I can't tell you that that won't be an issue. Then he says, it will definitely be an issue. In other words, listen, this is very important. If, if the definition of marriage is struck down, it's not just about marriage. What it means is every Christian school that upholds, you know, people are saying, well, take my, my children out of the public school, put them in a Christian, that upholds marriage, that doesn't agree with this, their tax exemption will be stripped by the uh. state by the state and they've had a precedent because they did this when there was a racial thing they said it, that we can't support this so we can well they'll say this is hate now so they will strip every now what that will mean is 
that every school, number one, no funding, and also no, they will have to pay, some of them are just on the edge, they can be driven out. So, also, anybody who contributes to them will no longer have tax exemption. That's step number one. But if they do that, they're certainly then going to go after ministries. If you don't agree with this, you are a hate group, we cannot, we cannot fund you by giving you a tax exemption, so they will strip away tax exemptions of ministries. The final thing will be churches. So we are watching, this actually, we are watching, we are watching the beginning of full-scale persecution, the separate, the marginalization of, of Christians. And so what, you know, what happens is, if you mainstream immorality, you will drive believers' righteousness to the margins. And so that is what is happening right now. We have to be strong. So the thing is, listen, we always wanted biblical times. We've got them now. <laughs> you, know, you, want, you want Bible times? You've got it. You want the book yeah. of Acts? You've got it. But we have to, God will anoint those who stand strong with the greatest anointing as on the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, Mary. We, God wants that. And this is our cue to rise to the call. I've been saying it over and over and over that he says he'll build his church. And I believe the church for the last days, is God's secret weapon. It's like building the ark. There's not going to be another ark, uh, uh, the, the boat. It, God's boat is the, is the church. He said, and God has ordained in these last days. See, there's churches everywhere. But the thing that the devil wanted to do is make them null and void, to take their power away. So what have they done? We've gone to money. The love of money is the root of all evil. So why wouldn't the devil pick us to fall in love with money? So the last decades we've been preaching, God's going to make you rich. But according to the headlines, and one of the guests was on the show, told us the amount of debt in America. That's right. Oh. Yeah, last week that we were actually talking about that, that there was a recent study that said that the real debt of America, if you add up absolutely everything, it's right at $211 trillion. But there was another study done that estimated the entire worth of the planet. That if you sold absolutely everything, everything that we're seeing here, that th this cup, your glasses, if we sold everything in the world, it would come to about $200 trillion dollars. America owes more than the entire worth of the planet. And great minds are telling us an explosion's coming. And this mm. week, you're going to tell us, you're what is going to happen on the end of the Semita? Mm -hmm. what, what does usually happen? Mm -hmm. We'll find out mm -hmm. what does God mm -hmm. usually do mm -hmm. this week, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every, I've never seen so many things converging. And we're not date setters, but we'll talk about all of it. I know but you're I've not. never seen so many things converge as they are now. But I mean, you're, everything. you yeah, do we're point us Oh yeah, we're, we're to gonna where be, we, we, we I believe, need to go and what I believe we, we need, need to, to do. We need to be ready. We need yes. to be ready, no yes. matter what. I believe, as you know, I a do. great shaking's coming, and we need to be ready. Yes. The ex-CIA director today, this is what he said. The United States is wide open to an attack upon our grid. Mm. That's the head. If the grid goes down, even Governor Huckabee said, Yes. All of America, I, I mean 95% of America would be dead. You know, the Bible talks about, in the Revelation, huge amounts of death. But yet we've got a situation in America that we've ignored. And politically, it's not correct to tell you that the grid is in trouble. And so I, we keep talking about it. Because all I do is I've studied the Revelation and I've found things that sound like Revelation days. House Inter Intel Committee Chairman, U.S. is at the highest threat level we have ever faced in this country. He says several Americans across the U.S. have been arrested and charged recently with being ISIS sympathizers and trying to join the terror group. He states that we are having a tough time tracking terrorist cells right now in the United States. But the Pentagon confirms that, the, that ISIS now possesses enough atomic material to make a dirty bomb. And that's what they've been trying to do. A dirty bomb can also create an EMP. But all these things are happening. And now we're talking about this bond market bracing for the worst crash in, I guess, in history. Yeah, the, the other worst crash was... 1994, year of the Shemitah.
Now we have a Samiti year coming. We're we're coming to the climax. The climax yeah. of it, the final. Yes, which is always yes. Is there a date on that? There is a date on that. It is it is September thirteenth. Is a little twenty nine. And that's where that date is one of God's days. It must be because. It keeps coming up all the time. The last two have, been, well, the last seven actually have been crashes. But on that date, exactly the greatest crashes, last two. We are now at the, the last next one. two. Yeah. On and now we're at the seventh yes, year. The last, yes. Again. And that's coming up. Would you get prepared? I mean, I believe, listen, again, do I believe. Do rabbis prepare? <laughs> I, I think so. I believe that I believe that it is a wise thing to prepare. I be, the, the most important preparation is get right with God. Yes. After that, Absolutely. it says a wise man sees things coming, sees calamity, and prepares. So I do believe it is wise. Don't go. It, the point is, what's the? It doesn't matter. I believe a great shaking is coming whenever, whether it happens then or it happens after. But either way, we should anyway. It's a wise thing. People have insurance. Be prepared. Yes. You know, be wise that you could help others. But now is the time. And the church should be able to have food. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I heard of a pastor this week. Uh, I think he ordered like $50,000 worth of food from our ministry, something like that. What was it wrong for a church to have supplies? To have, I'm saying putting bandages in. I'm going to order tons of bandages for here. We already are stacking food away so we can be ready to help people. The church is going to have the greatest hour. All, you know, if you're going to drive a car, don't you need fuel? Well, make believe you're a car. What is your fuel? Food. If you don't have food, you die. That's as simple as it is. It's going to be life and death. And that's why bread's going to take a whole day's labor just to get one loaf of bread. But be ready. We have new food in stock. Order the food. Stock up. It's so good. Get ready. Yes. And, and the, the food is amazing. And, and you can get a whole year of food for $600 for one person. Incredible. So you're going to be so thrilled you have that food. And you know what? Last week, I don't know if God tells me to do some things that I do. I hope, I hope he does. But I pray and I say, God, what do people like to eat? There's no sense, you know, Lori started putting a packet together, a bag, you know, grab right and go back. Right after Katrina. And she found yes. the food in that day. Yes. It was horrible. I mean, horrible. it was like bars of sawdust. Uh, uh, yes. You know, and, That's all there and was. And that was survival then. food. Well, yes. now we've, we've, we've been a part of helping and other people created great foods. And so this last week, I've been working for months and with, our, with our, one of our new food suppliers, and I said, you know, the favorite food in America, and this is proven, is what? Pizza. pizza. Who said pizza? Somebody said pizza right there. <laughs> we now have 20-year shelf life pizza. And it is good. We tasted it the other day. I was so shocked. When you get I it, ate the whole piece of pizza, Sasha. So oh. we have it so you get 24 pizzas. That's right. And for a gift of $250, that's a little over $10 a pizza. Yes. For 20 years, though, it sits, it, you can sit there. But it comes in packages in the bucket. It comes, the crust is in one. And you don't have to put anything in it. it, it they created it. it. It used to have to have uh, yeast. yeast to make it rise. But yeast will not preserve. Yeast has moisture in living organisms, or whatever you call them, in there. And, and so we, we couldn't use use uh, yeast right. and so they've been they've created and it worked the crust is wonderful is. without it yeast is. in it, it we so could have communion have with that crust we could make our bread for the no communion yeast, out no of that leaven. even no yeast, right. no, no leaven, leaven. that's yeah, it. <laughs> jewish people know <laughs> that over, like and so and then we have cheese yes, yes. mozzarella Mamma mia, wonderful mozzarella. <laughs> and that comes in a separate pack in your pizza bucket. That's right. And then you get the, the sauce, the marinara the sauce. sauce, marinara, mm -hmm. the red, thick, mamma mia, Italiano mar marinara. That's our new spaghetti <laughs> sauce, too. Yes, that's but right. I said, well, so if we good. can make spaghetti sauce this good, all we got it. So, oh, you know what we did? I'll tell you. We, all we did was took the spaghetti sauce and add oregano to it. And, uh, and, uh, and basil. Basil and a few and of those people. And we put all that in there. And so now 
We're the first people. We don't know of anybody in the world that has 20-year shelf life pizza. Right. Nobody has it. You say, oh, damn, you're crazy. Yeah, I probably am. But I'll tell you what, you're not going to call me crazy if that grid goes. And the, one of the most exciting things, Rabbi, it's really a lot in the Bible too, is honey. And because we have our cereal, when you, when you get the year of food, you get uh, one of the things is a, yes, a, the maple a brown whole grain sugar cereal. Oat, yes, the maple brown sugar oatmeal. And so if you want to put honey on your cereal, or I said, how do I have syrup? So I said, well, you know, honey makes a good syrup. And so if you get, when you get our year for you, the year for two, the seven year, Time of trouble. you get the pancakes, and the pancakes are oh, amazing. They are They're buttermilk incredible. pancakes. They fluff up, fluff up. We have a great chef right here in the front row. And she told me they're, they're as good as hers. And that's something because she's as good as it gets. <laughs> and what's going to happen when the food's gone? What is the world going to do that is dependent on the government? And the government goes out of money. God's judgment is coming. Let's just be ready. Yes. We're the lighthouse. We're yes. going to have the answers. See, the churches are not, are not teaching that's why our, our audience is growing like crazy. You have no idea what's going on with our network. We just added another five-day-a-week network at 7 every morning. Now we've added another one. We're going on late night. And right. then we added a s short wave. We're on three. That's right. Worldwide networks. Where's my radio? They're, they've, is that ship ever going to come in? Mm-hmm. What? They're, can they order them yet? Or I, did you? I think I had an email. No. What? Not for long. These will There's be gone again. The thing with this radio is it's solar. So it charges with sun. So you don't have to have batteries. You can have batteries. You can put batteries in it. You can do anything with this thing. And if then it's all sun, sun you, you, you can crank, crank it. it up. Mm -hmm. It'll crank up. And then you can charge your cell phones yes. with this radio. There's a USB port right it's a, in the back. It's, it's right. just a little simple thing. But it has lights. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, um, the lighting on it has the, a, a, a flashlight up here. That's right. And, uh, I mean, I just wish I could, I could demonstrate all of it because it is, it is so filled with stuff. Mm -hmm. And then back yes, here, it, the it back has the, the light panel. to read by or to light up your room with. Mm -hmm. This light here. And it all charges up with solar sun power or it charges up with cranking power crank. or you can have batteries in it and you can charge it up you can if we have we even bought extra mm -hmm. and, and put the electrical charger so That's you can right. you can charge port. it for the walls mm -hmm. if you want and uh, we always try to go the second mile with everything we do and that was extra and but we bought those and put those in there's just so many things on this all these radio bands but the short wave is there that uh, you can get radio when the grid is down. Right. You'll get it from other countries. Right. So we're offering these. For the ship has, has come in. They'll be gone again. We've ordered another ship. In fact, the company that makes this is one of the big, big radio companies. And we've already sold their ship. And we're basically going to be selling into the ship they ordered for themselves but Jerry Jones bought it all we, so we ordered Yay. that next ship and we're we're going to buy another ship load and there will be a day when the ships won't even be coming anymore but so if you want one of those at least get the order in even if if they tell you it's out but they, they're in right now the ship is uh, another ship has just come in so so you need to call 1-888-988-1588 or write us today at P.O. Box 7330 Branson, Missouri 65615 or go to our website jimbakershow.com go to the web store and that tells you everything about all of the products and it's so easy to do. Thank you for being with oh, us today. To we love you so <laughs> love much. You we you. love you Rabbi. Love Don't you. miss our next broadcast. Call right now before it's too late and get prepared. Amen. A thunderstorm warning has been issued for this area. Expect
power outages during the overnight and morning hours. How are you going to know about major events during extreme weather conditions or disasters that will occur in your area? The Solar Emergency Radio is the perfect radio for emergencies or disasters. It is one of the smallest radios available that can be charged using the attached solar panel. This radio can also be charged with the hand crank and from a computer using the included USB cable and can be powered by the built-in rechargeable battery pack, three AA batteries, or the AC adapter cord. The Solar Emergency Radio is truly one of the best radios that you can have for the last days or even today. It has AM and FM bands, two shortwave bands, and seven weather radio bands. One of the big things this has on it, it has shortwave, two bands of shortwave, because if the grid goes down, we don't have radio stations in this country. So if the grid goes down, what do we do? We turn on this, pull this out, and we can listen to radio from what other countries that are still have their grids up all over the world. Plus, this radio comes with the NOAA Weather Alert Radio. This radio also comes with an LED reading light, a flashlight, and a red flashing emergency light. It can also